Josh, we've heard a bit about your pre-season, seen snippets of you in some really competitive stuff. How would you describe the, the summer that you've had? Oh, look, yeah, just getting through a pre-season. So I haven't had surgery for a few years, so started day one. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been nice just to be able to do train Monday and Fridays, kind of lower level on a Wednesday. Um, I'm 32 now, so turning 33, so um, they don't get any easier. They're pretty tough, but it's just been good to be a part of everything since day one. When was your last full pre-season? Uh, probably like 2016, 2017. Right. 17, yeah. yeah so it's only a couple of years. Yeah, but how hard has it been to come into seasons off limited prep in, in the previous few years? Um, uh, no, I uh, not really. Just feel like you're fast tracking sometimes. I suppose like this time of year, um, you're probably feeling like you just need to get fitter, or you're doing a lot more work, a lot more stuff in the cardio room. So, um, yes, to be honest, so it's probably easier because you're not training as much, so mm. kind of relaxed. Do you feel like you're doing a bit better than just getting through? Um, no, not really, but I'm 32, so um, I know there's been crews of the West that have reported that I'm, well, I've said I'm flying, I'm definitely not flying, and said that it's the best pre-season I've had. Oh, it's definitely not the best pre-season I've had because I'm 32 years old, so um, I'm at that stage where it's just been nice to do all the training, being out there with the boys um, instead of sitting up in the cardio room looking out the window. Does it make you feel like, um, well, how, how do you feel placed to play your best footy come around? Uh, yeah, well, I suppose you always feel um, pretty poised to play best footy, um, depending on what your pre-season is. You, you don't really think about that too much when you're going out there playing. But look, you know, we've got a massive chunk of, of pre-season that I've been able to do, so it's um, it's always good. Um, I'm still at the back of every pack when we do running, so I'm not as fit as I used to be. When you look at the forward line, what, what excites you the most? Uh, mate, well, I suppose seeing a lot of the younger kids come through is something that's... Um, is always pretty cool. Um, seeing Jack develop into the player that he has been, we've played a lot of footy together now and seeing where he's at in his career and uh, what he's been able to do and um, also lead as well as a, as a leader of this football club has been quite special. Um, but then seeing younger kids come through like Oscar Allen, um, who is going to be you know, a great player for this club and um, the way he goes about his pre-season and the way he plays is, is something that's pretty cool to see. So um, to see him learning every week, seeing him make mistakes and then get back on the horse and learn is, is something that um, I know you look back now as an old player, you quite like to see. He's been used all over the field, but he's been used all over the field. Um, yeah. Oscar Allen, but you still believe his best spot is in the fourth? Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. He's because he he's so versatile and where he can go. And um, we need him down back. He goes down back. You know, you have him up forward. Um, I suppose it's a bit like back in the day with Adam Hunter. You know, when you need a few goals, he can kick a few goals. But if you need him to go down back, he can he can do that job. So um, I suppose it's good at that age to learn both those roles and uh, knowing. Um, I still see him up forward. The way he plays, the way he leads, the way he marks, and his set shots, having kicking goals. But um, having that other string to your bow is something that's. Uh, that's pretty cool um, because a lot of us just have that one position we can play and if you can't play it then you're, then you're out of here. Josh, you, uh, Adam said at the weekend in the paper that you know had Eagles fans had to have realistic expectations of you given, and you said you're 32, what are your expectations for 2020 and yourself? Uh, same as every year that I've, I've played football, just trying to be a consistent key forward. So consistency is something that um, uh, I try to hold on to and um, but that's, that's, that's my uh, goals been for the last 10 years of playing. How do you measure that consistency? Um, I suppose just playing my role, doing my job. Um, whether it's goals, whether it's making a contest, um, I suppose up forward, uh, helping out, I suppose uh, setting up with the younger kids um, coming through um, and just making sure that I'm trying to get the best out of myself. Will you look at the number of goals kicked as you go and feel disappointed, void, as you can like? Will you analyse it as the season goes? Um, look, no, I pretty much just go on my opportunities um, that I have, whether I kick them or not. Um, you know, sometimes you can have 10 opportunities on goal and you can kick 10 goals straight. Sometimes you can have no opportunities, which is the real disappointing so, um, thing. So I, I kind of go on how many opportunities I can try and create for myself uh, or for the team to kick a goal. So that's kind of what I go on. At this stage, do you plan on playing every game this year that you can? Yeah, hopefully, yeah, yeah. Mentioned Jack earlier. What are your expectations for him in 2020? Expectations? 
Um, look, you know, for, for him, just keep doing what he's doing. Um, you know, he's starting to turn into a um, bit of a, I suppose, beast of the competition in terms of his marking power, his ability to, to kick some goals now, which is which is great to see. Um, but he doesn't have to do anything more than what he's been doing. Um, the way he goes, you know, about his business, especially leading, taking over and control of the forward line, um, something that's put us in really good stead and will for, for many, many years. So, um, look, Jack gets his body right, gets fit like he always does. Yeah, he'll um, yeah, he'll, he'll have another good year. Is there any update on his um, cheek? No, I think so. Yeah, he had a bit of a bit of a fracture or a bit of incident training. So um, I think he'll be he's still can able to run and, and do everything like that. It's probably just the contact that he's not able to in. So I think usually with bone it starts to set after two or three weeks, and then after that you're pretty good to go. So um, I'm not too sure how many weeks they've given him, but he's been back running and running around having a kick. So all the fitness stuff will be fine. Uh, we'll just be getting him back into the competitive stuff. He seems to have taken his game to a, an even higher level over the past two seasons. You, you've seen him really close up. What, what has he done differently to really elevate his game? Um, I don't think he's done too much. I think just his, um, I suppose, belief in himself probably has probably been a big thing. He's always he's always had the strength, the speed, um, I suppose, and durability to, to play AFL football. and. Um, I think over over the years he's he's really just built that belief and um, the marks he takes, the goals he kicks is um, yeah he's just a byproduct of, of that belief. So um, you know Jack's been in a really good space for for many years and hopefully um, you know I feel like he's just going to keep getting better and better. I don't think he's only 26, 27. So he's still uh, he's still got many more years to, to play some good football. How's um, Kelly fitted into the side and what are you, what are you expecting of him this season? Um, well, we don't really put too much expectation on, on guys that have come across. He's come from a, another club. He's one of the, uh, I suppose, benchmark midfielders of the competition, especially the last two years. But expectation for us is just to come in and, and play his football that he plays. And he, um, he's, he's been really great coming through this preseason. Um, he can find the footy. Uh, we've noticed that at training a fair bit. Um, but just his, I suppose, ability to, to help and guide young kids um, is something that I suppose for him, he's only been in the AFL system for two years. He's a bit older, but seeing him help uh, the younger kids in our team has, has been something that's been quite special, so it's an added bonus. But um, look, for him, it's just go out there and enjoy his footy and do his thing. Who do you see uh, filling that role of Willie Rioli's that's open at the moment? Yeah, look, I suppose it's, it's pretty hard to fill a, a Willie Rioli. Um, uh, so for us, you know, we've got to, um, I suppose, go through our list with our smaller forwards. There's, you know, we've got a couple of guys train, I suppose, over the last couple of weeks because we've still got one more spot that we can fill. Um, but, you know, we've got guys like Jack Petricelli and, and Kripa um, and Liam Ryan who all play that small forward role. So, um, you know, Willie's always going to be hard to replace, but, you know, he will be replaced with, with someone that can, um, I suppose, fill that role. So you were available to play for the Allies in the Origin game? Um, no, no, I'm not going to play next week. So yeah, but um, I think we've got a few players. I think the coaches start to pick their teams. I think it's released today or something. So um, I think we've got a few guys um, up for selection. So ho hopefully, a few of us get picked. But yeah, I won't be playing next week. Are you playing any of the preseason games? Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Play I think Essendon and Freo. Yeah.